Hi everyone, in today's video I'll cover the two main weapon types that ranged rogues will use in Diablo 4 and those are bows and crossbows. Just before jumping in, this information today is based on what we currently know about the Diablo 4 game at this point, more will be revealed and discovered once the full game comes out. And secondly, this video will mainly cover how these weapons would perform out in the battlefield and not so much on the aesthetics, cosmetics and things like that. With that out of the way, we'll first compare the basics of what bows and crossbows bring us. For bows, this is a faster firing weapon out of the two with a base attack speed of 1.1 attacks per second. And for crossbows, they fire slower than bows but make up for it with higher damage. Both bows and crossbows generally have the same damage per second or DPS and have the same set of random mods on each weapon, or at least this can be assumed as such at this stage. The next difference between bows and crossbows is their implicit stat on each weapon type. This is similar to how maces in past Diablo games have extra damage versus undead monsters. For bows, they come with a percentage damage bonus to distant enemies, and for crossbows, they come with increased vulnerable damage. For bows, the bonus damage to distant enemies only applies when enemies are outside of your close proximity, so as long as you can reliably maintain your distance from your targets, you should be fine. It's not exactly clear what the terms distant or close mean in Diablo 4, but if forceful arrows of any indication, distant enemies need to be at least 3 meters away from your location to be counted as distant damage. Because of this, ranged builds using Barrage up close, as well as hybrid builds that leverage the close quarter combat key passive using melee and ranged attacks will not see much benefit from this mod. For crossbows, the extra vulnerable damage is useful in any situation, as long as you're able to apply the vulnerable debuff on your targets. Vulnerable damage is also a less common stat compared to all additive stats such as damage versus distant enemies, and gets calculated into your total damage in a different way from additive stats, so for implicit stats, crossbows win out so far. Next, another difference between bows and crossbows is a weapon mastery passive. Weapon mastery grants a bonus to your rogue's damage based on what weapon you're using on each given attack. For bows, weapon mastery grants increased damage to vulnerable enemies at 4% per rank. For crossbows, weapon mastery grants increased critical strike damage at 5% per rank. Both of these stats are valuable stats to have, which depending on your other items and skills that lead to proccing critical strike or vulnerable damage more often, could lead towards bows or crossbows being more favourable for your particular build. Everything up to here covers all the immutable differences between bows and crossbows. So going deeper from here, how do all these differences affect your build overall? I'll go into some of the other bonuses, benefits and game factors that you would expect to see as a rogue in Diablo 4 and how bows and crossbows fare in each one. Starting with energy management, with bows shooting faster but hitting softer than crossbows, this effectively means that rogues core skills will consume more energy for the same DPS output. Rogues using a bow will find some slight extra challenges in energy management as a ranged rogue's basic skills don't generate her energy either. This lends a natural advantage to crossbows as a result, and leads into an advantage for crossbows using the Edge Master's legendary aspect, which increases your damage based on how full your energy meter is. As the less energy you spend, the fuller your energy meter will be, thereby maximizing your damage output from this legendary aspect. For cooldown skills, specifically cooldown based skills that deal damage such as traps and ultimates that use bows or crossbows as part of their damage calculation, those skills will do more damage with crossbows which have higher base damage. For skills that are neither Marksman or Cutthroat skills such as Caltrops, Poison Trap and Death Trap, the damage is taken from either of your bow or crossbow or your two one-handed weapons depending on which of those combinations have higher damage value. This doesn't apply to cooldown skills such as Dash and Shadow Step however as these are Cutthroat skills that calculate their damage based on your two one-handed weapons. So in this case, it's better to use a crossbow if your rogue is heavily reliant on traps or rain of arrows as a form of damage output. For imbuements, imbuements for Shadow, Cold and Poison all work in similar ways that you cast an imbuement which grants your next two attacks with additional damage for that imbuement type. For Shadow, your attacks will infect enemies with Shadow powers that explode when the target dies or once worn off deal damage to that single target. For Cold, your attacks will chill enemies, potentially freezing them. And for Poison, your attacks will deal additional poison damage. In all cases, your damage dealt with your imbuements over the top of your normal imbuable skills is based on your weapon's damage for shadow imbuement. And for poison imbuement, your overall damage across a single cast of the skill, i.e. rapid fire. For these imbuements, crossbows have an advantage there. For cold imbuement, its core chilling stat chills enemies by a fixed percentage which is always equal for bows and crossbows. The only thing different there is that bows can apply chill quicker than crossbows. Otherwise, crossbows are overall better when using imbuement skills. 
Next, I'll go into conditional benefits. Specifically here, we're talking about passives, upgrades, and other benefits that grant you a conditional or one-time benefit, such as impetus, which grants times 7% damage per rank on your next attack after moving 15 meters. Or concealment that is upgraded to grant you a guaranteed critical strike when breaking concealment with an attack. These benefits only last for one attack and need to have their condition met again before being granted that benefit once again. As a result, crossbows can better leverage those benefits better than bows as these benefits only last for one attack and therefore attack speed is not a factor. For duration based effects, specifically ones that are caused by cooldown skills or other timed events that also have a duration to them are a little bit different however, as these benefits last beyond just a single or fixed number of attacks and instead have a fixed duration. There are plenty of effects that fall under this umbrella, including any vulnerable debuff sources from shadow and cold imbuement, poison traps and rain of arrows knockdown effect, and rapid fire's critical strike damage boost after evading. All these effects come just as often with bows and crossbows, and the effects themselves last just as long between using a bow or crossbow as well. So you can expect bows and crossbows to perform similarly with each other with these sorts of benefits. For proc based events where it can be triggered from either lucky hit where each attack has a fixed lucky hit percentage chance to cause one or more effects to happen, critical strikes where each time you land a critical strike, a secondary effect will happen, or things like combo points or inner sight, which causes something to happen, or otherwise any other mechanics where you attack with an attack speed driven skill that causes something else to happen. With proc based effects, there are two broad categories for these, scaled proc events and fixed proc events. Scaled proc events are effects that are triggered from some kind of proc, where that the proc effect itself is scaled based on variable factors. Though not a perfect example, combo points are an example of this, where 3 hits from basic attacks will accumulate 3 combo point charges to unleash a stronger core skill attack. With bows, you can accumulate combo points faster, but at the same time, the unleashed attack is not as strong as it would be with a crossbow. For inner sight, the inner sight gauge fills up based on the total amount of damage that you deal to a targeted enemy, so the inner sight gauge should fill up just as quickly with bows and crossbows. And then legendary aspects such as aspects of arrow storms, icy alchemist and toxic alchemist aspects, which trigger a secondary attack on enemies on lucky hit based on your weapon's damage. We will see bows trigger this effect more often. However, assuming that these proc effects scale based on weapon damage, each of these effects will do greater damage with crossbows. So with scaled proc effects, assuming they scale equally, bows and crossbows should fare similarly with each other with this in mind. However, there's one caveat here where some of the proc effects can carry secondary benefits themselves and so procing these effects more often has its own benefits. Icy Alchemist releases cold explosions that deal cold damage and chills enemies, so bows triggering this effect more often can benefit from enemies being chilled or frozen more often before they are finished off. And then the Toxic Alchemist Poison Explosions can grant your rogue additional benefits from the debilitating toxins and alchemical advantage passives that buff the rogue's damage reduction and attack speeds when enemies are poisoned. With these secondary effects in mind, bows have an advantage here overall over crossbows. And then there's fixed proc effects that don't scale in effectiveness based on your weapon. This is where bows have a clear advantage over crossbows. Effects from items that give life on hit are an example of this, where we saw the temerity unique that was shown by the devs recently. Where with your lucky hit chance aside, how quickly you heal is proportional to how quickly you attack. And any duration based effects that proc in proportion to your attack speed, such as force of Laro and second wind, are also examples of this. Where the fixed proc effects can lend themselves to benefiting rogues using bows more than ones using crossbows. And last but not least, there are playstyle considerations that we need to keep in mind as well. Bows fire faster and naturally will complete their attack animations quicker, whereas crossbows will keep you stuck in place for just that little longer. This would be particularly noticeable with skills like rapid fire and barrage, which keep you stationary briefly to complete firing all of the arrows. Because of this, bows will be safer to use while enemies are hot on your tail or swarming you as you can reposition more quickly with bows. This will become more noticeable in higher world tiers where enemies will be quite punishing with harder hits or crowd controlling effects, or even one shotting you. So now from here, let's do a quick recap. Builds that heavily use imbuements, traps or rain of arrows as a primary source of damage should be able to inflict more damage with crossbows. Likewise, any skills or benefits that are conditional or one-time benefit for your attacks lend to crossbows being better for taking advantage of these benefits to the fullest. Whereas builds that rely on lots of lucky hit based procs will likely perform better with bows as long as a rogue can manage their energy upkeep. One of the coolest data mine uniques is Grasper's Shadows, which has a lucky hit chance to spawn a shadow clone, which bows can trigger more often for greater uptime on that shadow clone. 
For Weapon Mastery, where it grants damage to vulnerable enemies for bows and critical strike damage for crossbows, this will affect your final DPS in different ways, depending on how you build around applying vulnerable or stacking critical strike chance. And at the very start of the video, I mentioned the different implicit stats on each weapon type, but most likely these are just small factors to consider in comparison to your skills and paragon choices, whether you're making a heavy proc based build or not, and whether you're leaning more towards vulnerable damage or critical strikes in deciding whether you should main with a bow or crossbow. So that's all I wanted to cover in this video today. If you have made it this far, then thanks for watching, I really hope you got something out of it. If you did, please pop a like on this video and subscribe for more Diablo 2 Bolazon and Diablo 4 Rogue updates. Until then, have a great day and I'll see you all in the next video.